The American flag has 13 stripes and 50 stars. You know how I know that? Because Pocket Ronnie helped me with my numbers. Okay, we're doing fractional exponents. Uh, look at 6, 8, 10. There are several different ways you can do this. Okay, here we have 27 to the 2 thirds raised to the second power. The one of the main things to remember is when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you can multiply those. You multiply, not add. But you can also simplify this in the parentheses first. So generally, that's what I do. Um, sometimes I go ahead and multiply these, so it doesn't really matter. Um, let's just say I go ahead and multiply these. Okay, I can turn any number into a fraction by putting it over 1. So if I go ahead and multiply these, I now have uh, 27 to the 4 thirds power. Because a fraction multiplied to a fraction, you just multiply straight across. Numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator. Now when you have a fractional exponent, your denominator means what root you are taking. Square root, cube root, to the fourth root. Your numerator tells you what power you are raising to. Okay? What power you are raising. Okay, that's like square cubed to the fourth. So normally I take the root first. So the 27 to the four thirds means I want to take the cube root of 27, then raise it to the fourth power. Okay? If I want to write it in a radical format, I would do it like this 27, the cube root, that's a three, the cube root of 27, and then raise that. To the fourth power. Okay, that's how it would be written with radical. So, um, the cube root of 27, what times itself three times gives you 27, and that would be 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So, 3 times itself three times is 27. So, the cube root of 27 is 3, and then we still want to raise it to the fourth power. So, now you go through this again. 20, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is uh, 81, okay? 3 to the 4th is 81. So when you have numbers, simplify them all the way down, the all the way that you possibly can. Okay, now look at 6B6. Okay, you have a fraction inside here, raised to an exponent, raised to an exponent, all right? So... I'm going to go ahead and multiply these exponents. An exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply them. You can turn that 2 into a fraction by putting it over 1. And now do you see how my 2 and 8 will cancel? You can either go ahead and multiply that so it's 2 eighths, but 2 eighths also reduces down to 1 fourth. So you can go ahead and cancel them here. So then basically you have 16 over 81 to the 1 fourth power. Means I want you to take the fourth root, and when you do um, a fraction, you have to do the numerator and the denominator. I need to take the fourth root of the numerator and the denominator. And then I'm raising them both to the one power, which just means multiply to itself once. So, in essence, here's what we have, if you want to think of it this way, 16 over 81 to the fourth root. So I needed the fourth root of each one of those. So what times itself four times gives me 16, that would be 2. Because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Then what times itself four times gives you 81, again that's 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times another 3 is 81. So what times itself four times gives you 81? 3. So that final answer is 2 thirds. Now look at 6b7. You have 1 third to the negative 4. You've already done negative exponents because when you change the place of the base, you change the sign of the exponent. But now we have a fraction. All right. So basically when you have a negative exponent with fractions, it will basically just take the reciprocal of this fraction because I want to move the 3 up to the top and the 1 down to the bottom. Each of these things change places. The 3 goes up here, the 1 comes down there. So it basically becomes 3 over 1. When you're dealing with a fraction and you have a negative, 
to, change, to make it a positive exponent, you're basically taking the reciprocal because the 3 moves up here and the 1 moves down here to where basically you have 3 over 1 to the 4th because now your exponent becomes positive, which is the same thing. 3 divided by 1 is just 3 to the 4th. And from these other problems, 3 to the 4th, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. This is not 3 times 4. This is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, not 3 times 4. All right, now look at 63. All the ones we've done so far were numbers. Now let's see how do we do this if we have letters and we have fractional exponents. When you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply. You can turn any number into a fraction by putting it over 1. Now do any of my numbers cancel? Yes, the 3's do. So multiplying your fractions, this just becomes x to the 2 over 1, and 2 over 1 is just x squared. Since we don't have a number here, there's nothing else to simplify. That is it. That is simplified. Okay, we're still doing fractional exponents. Look at 6a16. Okay, these are in radical form, and they want you to put them, they want you to rewrite it with fractional exponents. Again, there are several different ways you can do this. You can rewrite this in a fractional exponent, or you can work it and then write your final answer as a fractional exponent, okay? I'm going to do it two different ways. So if I wrote this underneath here, the first square root, that would be 25 to the 1 half, because 25 is being raised to the first power, and that is like a 2 that's not written there. And so to the 1 half, okay? So that's the first radical. And then this would be the outside radical. It would be raising it again to the 1 half. Okay? So that's how you would write with fractional exponents. And then you can go and multiply these. But I like to simplify from the inside out first if I can. So coming from here, I'm just going to work from here. This is how you can write with fractional exponents. But I'm going to work from here. So first off, I can do, I see that I can do square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So that inside radical is 5, and then that would still be my outside radical. So this is still my outside radical, and then the answer to this, square root of 25, is just 5. But they want me to write it as a fractional exponent, because square root of 5 is a decimal. So therefore, I would write my answer as 5 to the 1 half with a fractional exponent. Okay, same for here if I worked on the inside out. The inside, 25 to the 1 half, which means square root of 25 is 5. So this whole thing on the inside would turn to 5, and then you would still have 5 to the 1 half. So you'd get the same answer either way. Okay, go to 6b13. They're just wanting you to learn how to put these in fractional exponents. The root, this is the cube root of 8 raised to the fifth power. So the root goes in the denominator, and then when you're raising it, to a power that goes in the numerator. Then you simplify if you can, okay? What is the cube root of 8? Because remember this means the cube root. What is the cube root of 8? It is 2 because you're saying what times itself 3 times gives you 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So 2 cubed is 8. 2 times itself 3 times gives you 8. So the cube root of 8 is 3, I mean 2 and then you want to raise it to the fifth power. So we just did the cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. Now we want to raise it to the fifth power. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 2 to the fifth is 32. Remember this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is not 2 times 5. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, however many did I say that enough? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 32. Now look at 6a17. They have it written this way. The 6th root of 64 to the negative 3 power. Okay? Again, they just want it written with a fractional exponent. I like to work from the inside out, and I'm going to work with this already in radical form. So I want to see, can I do the 6th root of 64? What times itself? Actually, if I put it in fractional form, I might can reduce it because I see that 3 and 6 maybe can reduce. So I'm going to go ahead and write it in a fractional form because it will make the number smaller. So if I have 64, 
the root goes in the denominator, the power goes in the numerator. Now I can reduce that. So that would be 64 to the negative one half. For me, that's a lot easier to, to manage than doing the sixth root because now this means square root, okay? The square root. And don't forget, this negative up here means a fractional exponent. If I wanna make this a positive, I've gotta change the place of the base. So here's what happens. See, it's this over one. In order to make my exponent positive, I have to change the place of my base. So essentially, this becomes one over 64 to the one half. Okay, remember this negative does not have anything to do with the negative sign in front of the number. This negative implies a fraction answer. So move this down to make it a positive exponent. Now this down here means square root of 64. So I still have my one in my numerator. The square root of 64 is 8. So that all of that simplifies down to 1 8. Now look at 6b16. They're just wanting you to write it in fractional exponents. I'm not dealing with any numbers, so I won't be able to simplify my numbers, but I can simplify my exponents. Fourth root. So your root goes in the denominator. The power you're raising it to goes in the numerator. Then look to see, can you reduce your exponent? 8 divided by 4, A squared. And that's as simplified as we can get.